Consider the sequence a sub n, which is 1 over n squared times sine of n. So how can we determine if this sequence will converge or if it will diverge? Well, we need to find a limit as n approaches infinity and see if it converges into a specific value, like a constant, or if it diverges to infinity or negative infinity. So how can we find the answer? Well, for a problem like this, we need to use the squeeze theorem. So let's say if we have some function g of x, and g is between f of x and h of x. Well, the basic idea behind the squeeze theorem is that, let's say if the limit as x approaches some number for f of x, let's say it's equal to l, and the limit as x approaches c, of h of x, let's say that's also equal to l. So notice that the lower part of these three functions and uh, the higher part, they equal the same limit. If that's true, then the part in the middle should also equal the same limit. So therefore, the limit as x approaches c for g of x must also be l. And so that's the gist of the squeeze theorem. So let's see if we can apply that to this example. Now we need to be familiar with the behavior of sine. So let's say if we were to graph sine x. This is basically a sinusoidal function that varies between 1 and negative 1. So we could say that sine n will always be between negative 1 and 1. Now taking this expression, let's divide all three sides of the inequality by n squared. So we're going to have negative 1 over n squared, sine n over n squared, which is the original expression, and positive 1 over n squared. So now in this form, we can apply the squeeze term. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity for negative 1 over n squared? Well, we know that's going to be equal to 0. Negative 1 divided by a very large number will give you a small number. Likewise, the limit as n approaches infinity for positive 1 over n squared is also 0. So because these two limits equal the same value, then for the function in the middle, we should also get the same value as well. I mean the sequence in the middle. So the limit as n approaches infinity for the sequence sine n over n squared must also be 0 based on the squeeze theorem. And so that's how you can use the squeeze theorem to determine if a sequence will be, if it's going to converge or diverge. Another way in which we can determine if the sequence is going to converge or if it's going to diverge is to graph the sequence as a continuous function. So let's say if we have the function f of x and we're going to say that's equal to sine x over x squared. Go ahead and graph this function in your graphing calculator. Or if you don't have one, just use an online graphing calculator. So if you graph this function, it's going to look something like this. So for the most part, it looks like 1 over x squared. However, it's kind of like 1 over x in a sense that it's an odd function. But as it approaches the x-axis, it alternates a little at the x-axis due to sine of x. And the same is true on this side. It alternates just a little, not much, just barely noticeable. But the net effect is that as x approaches infinity, as you travel towards the right on the x-axis, notice that it approaches, I mean the curve approaches the x-axis. So the function f of x approaches 0. So thus the limit as x approaches infinity for sine x over x squared is equal to 0. And whenever the limit approaches a specific number, then you could say that the sequence sine n over n squared is going to converge. And so by graphing it, you can look at the end behavior of the graph and get a, a good idea if the sequence will converge or if it's going to diverge. So let's say if you have another graph and you have some curve 
and it approaches some type of horizontal asymptote, then that means the limit as n approaches infinity will exist, which means the sequence converges. But let's say we have a graph where it doesn't approach a horizontal asymptote. Let's say if it just increases forever towards positive infinity, then the sequence for that type of graph, it's going to diverge. It has to approach some type of horizontal asymptote in order for the sequence to converge. So those are some things to keep in mind if you want to find your answer graphically.